Well, hello everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I was out looking over our beautiful flat earth the other day, and I decided I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. So I got out the map and just looked upon it in wonderment. You know, I noticed that if I was at the North Pole, I could easily see the distance that I was going south in any direction, and it would all be the same. And I happened to notice there was a little line on this chart that was marked zero, and it went right through England. And I have a lot of friends in England, so I decided to go from the North Pole to England, and then I carried that right down to another line that said zero. And I saw that that line was marked as the equator, and it was just south of the ear of Africa. I got a little homesick, so I decided I'd make a right turn, just follow that zero line all the way over to where it said 90 again and then turn right and go north, past the U.S. and straight back to the North Pole. But then I spilled coffee on that map and I had to get this one out. But that was okay because it had my original route marked. I started at the North Pole, I went straight down through England, and ended up just underneath the ear of Africa at the equator. Then I made a right turn and I went over to 90 degrees west, I made another right turn and followed that all the way back to the North Pole where I started. But something looked strange to me. It seems like I was making 90 degree turns, and that would have meant that my triangle, which was what appeared on the map, would have 270 degrees in it. I seem to recall that a triangle only has 180 degrees of angles. I know where I started, I know where I went, and I know I ended up back at the same place I started. So I decided to head back to the dining room table and see if I could figure out what happened. Why don't you join me? By you, I mean all of you and Nathan Oakley. So I got out my flat earth model and I, since I knew I had traveled 90 degrees from the pole through England down to the equator and then 90 degrees back from the equator to the North Pole and then 90 degrees in between, I used some pencils to set up my trip. And I noticed that I had an equilateral triangle with sides 1, 1, and 1. Now if I had gone home a little early, I would have traveled the same 90 degrees back to Oh, wait a minute, that pencil looks like it's a little long. No, it looks like all the pencils are exactly the same length. Now, why is it that there was pencil left over when I traveled from 45 degrees at the equator, the full 90 degrees back to the North Pole? There had to be some extra room there somewhere. This confused me, so I thought I'd see if I could make it fit. So I decided to go ahead and mark up a piece of paper and make some paper strips. Remember in kindergarten that we used to use something called construction paper, but I don't have any of that anymore, so I had to use printer paper. And once I did that, I decided to mark a line and divide those strips in half, just because it seemed like a neat thing to do. So then I had all these strips of paper. So I decided I was going to make myself a triangle. Uh, with lengths 1, 1, and 1, and see if I could make my trip fit the map. So I started putting the strips of paper together to match my route. And before too long, I had it kind of roughed out. And I put it all together and made myself a triangle. And here we are. Then I decided I would take that 45 degree turn that I made at the 45th uh, degree of longitude west and see if I could make that fit as well. And here we are. Then my friend Rob called me. He's a pilot from Australia. And he said that he had made a similar trip going from Australia up to the equator and then over to London and on to the North Pole and then right back to where he... Uh, join the equator from Australia. So let's go ahead and extend this out a little bit. The next thing you know, I had something that kind of looked like this. 
That kind of looks like half a ball to me. What's it look like to you guys? Then my friend Jerry called me up, and he said he had just taken an airplane trip. He had gone from Sydney, Australia, to Cape Town, South Africa. And to prove it, he sent me this map, which is like a flight map that airline people use to find where they're going. He even got me a copy of the flight plan from the pilots. And here it is, and you can all check it yourself. There are the airports, and as you can see, the distance is very clearly listed there at 5,950 nautical miles. You know, I was looking at this flight path again, and it seems to kind of arc way down by the ice wall. I'm curious as to why they didn't go straight across, but the pilots assured my friend Jerry that that was the absolute shortest route through that area. So, Sydney's at 151 degrees east latitude, and Cape Town is at 18 degrees east latitude, and that's 133 degrees that that plane went, and it traveled 5,950 miles. That works out to around 45 miles per degree. But I know on the equator, each degree is 69 miles. It's almost as though it shrunk in a little bit. So I went back to the kitchen table, and I decided to go ahead and kind of pinch in that flight route on my, on my little paper map. And I ended up with this lovely sphere. So I've come to the conclusion that maybe our world is not flat. Maybe it's a sphere. What do you think? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. This rabbit hole's too deep.